Hello, another month has gone by, which means we should all have read this book. This was the Buttons Bookshelf book for last month, tongue twister. It was Mindy Kaling's Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? That's a lot of outs for a Canadian to say. Is everyone is everyone hanging out without me? As you know, I am a huge fan of reading books like this. I love Tina Fey's book. I love Amy Poehler's book. I really, really, really wanted to read this book and I'm so glad I chose it for the book club. Before we get started, make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm going to be announcing the next Buttons Bookshelf video, and it's a book that people have been requesting non-stop. I think my favorite thing about it was that it was written in a very conversational style. I read it in Mindy's voice. I love Mindy's voice so much. I feel like that's kind of a weird compliment, but I love her voice. I could listen to it all damn day. So as I was reading through everything, I could really hear Mindy delivering the jokes. She would say something serious and then, you know, kind of end it off with something hilarious. Just when you weren't expecting it, she'd hit you with a mmm, and I found the book so funny. Some of my favorite parts of the book and probably the parts I could relate to the most were when she was talking about her childhood and how she felt like she was kind of a loner. She was never one of the popular people and she was kind of speaking about how that really gave her I guess like ammunition to become the amazing writer and comedian that she is today because she was doing a lot of observing. So she was almost like a fly on the wall and observing all of these different situations and I feel like that's kind of given her a leg up in the comedy world. Speaking of the comedy world, and I feel like I already spoke about this in the Amy Poehler book video, um, I find it fascinating just the journey from being a kid to becoming a really successful comedy writer. I think one of the main reasons why I love reading these books so much is because comedy is such a male dominated industry. So I find it really cool for one thing that these amazing women have made it and made it so well and they're so respected and they're so funny and I just, I love, I love a good girl power story, you know? Whenever I read these books for Buttons Bookshelf, I take notes as I'm reading. So I'm just gonna go through chronologically, chronologically um, my notes. So the first one I have is page 20. This is the chapter called Chubby for Life and I'm not gonna dwell too much on this subject because like Mindy said, it's just, it's nothing that is even like a big concern for her. She wrote in the book that being skinny isn't even on her priority list and I thought she had a really great way of thinking about health and body image and I particularly liked this part. She writes, if someone called me chubby, it would no longer be something that kept me up late at night. She was basically saying that it has no power over her anymore. She's like, do I envy Jennifer Hudson for being able to lose all that weight and look so smoking hot? Of course, yes, I do. Do I ever wonder how awesome life would be if I never had to wear Spanx? But on the list of things I want to do in my lifetime, getting thin is not near the top. I mean, it's not near the bottom either. I'd say it's right above learn to drive a Vespa, but several notches below film a chase scene for a movie. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is on page 31. And this rang so true to me because I was never the popular person in high school. I remember that feeling in high school of, of looking at the really popular kids and thinking, I am never gonna be one of those people. I'm never gonna be as cool as them. They're gonna grow up to be the coolest people ever. And I also got a tweet about this that says, what I've noticed is that almost no one who was a big star in high school is also a big star later in life. And I remember, people telling me that when I was in high school and I was so down on myself because I wasn't a popular kid. And I think that is such an important thing to remember, especially if you're in high school right now, is just when, when you're going through that, who you are in high school does not in any way define who you're going to be later in life. Speaking from personal experience, there were a few particular people in my life who were mean to me over and over and over again. And funny enough, those same people are the ones today trying to add me on Facebook, trying to hang out with me and get to know me. And it's just kind of like, bish, please. And it's a very satisfying feeling. So don't be feeling bad about yourself if you're in that situation. Speaking of friends, page 83 has a very funny chapter, which is called Best Friend Rights and Responsibilities. And one thing I love about Mindy is she has a lot of lists. So she makes a lot of lists pertaining to different subjects. So this has like a few bullet points about what it is and what it takes to be a best friend. And I found it really interesting that Mindy actually lived with a bunch of her friends in this really tiny apartment. The way she described the apartment in the book is that it was one room here, one room here, one room here, and you had to walk through these rooms to get to this room. 
I'm like out of the shot here to get to this room. So her and all of her friends were always kind of in each other's lives. I don't think I could ever in a million years do that, but it must have been so fun and such a fun time in her life to be able to live like that and just have besties, you know? I'm just gonna read out one of the friendship rules, and that is if your phone conversation gets disconnected, there's no need to call back. I get it, you get it. We take forever getting off the phone anyway. This is a blessing. And I just think that's a sign of a really good friend when you don't have to call the person back if the phone gets disconnected. Really cool part in the book was on page 126, and it's when she talks about Ghostbusters and how she would love to see an all-female cast of Ghostbusters, which, if you didn't know, is a thing. It's happening, it's going to happen, and I'm gonna see it on the opening day because I'm so excited. I'm actually gonna link to the Ghostbusters trailer below because I haven't been this excited for a movie in a long, long time. I'm so excited, but I thought it was so neat that she put that in the book. I mean, does she get paid for that or what? Because it was her freaking idea. Anyway, Paige also found this very interesting. She tweeted me and she's like, OMG, Mindy Kaling predicted the future. So leave me a comment down below if you are just as excited about the new Ghostbusters. Julia says, Mindy is so down to earth and so honest. Wish all people would take her as an example of not taking life too seriously. Agreed, Mindy is amazing. I love the part in the book where she shows her selfies. So she shows all of the times where she's been like, I really like my makeup today. And then she shows the selfie, which I think is so funny. And what is that sound? What does that sound? Karen says, I love where she planned every detail of her funeral, including a eulogy. What would you put in your plan? And that's something I have never thought about. It's so creepy to even think about that, isn't it? I would want it to be upbeat and I wouldn't want anyone to wear black. That is one thing. I don't know if Mindy said that, I can't remember, but I wouldn't want anyone to wear dark clothes. I'd want it to be super casual. And like Mindy said, there would have to be good food because I want people to be able to have good food, okay? I think that's all I'm gonna talk about for this installment of Button's Bookshelf. It's time to announce the next book. Mwah -ah -ah. So this is a very popular request. I've had so many people begging me to put this as the next book. So I listened. It is going to be John Green's Paper Towns. I've read a lot of John Green's books, but I've never read Paper Towns and I'm excited. As you know, it's gonna be a movie. So I thought it would be a nice light read to read. There's a, what is this plane? What is that sound? I thought it would be a good one for the bookshelf because so many of you have asked to read it and I've been wanting to read it as well. So hopefully you guys are happy with this pick. Don't forget to use the hashtag buttons bookshelf if you have anything to say on the subject, things you like about it, things you hate about it, questions you have about it, topics you want me to talk about, tweet me at Essie Button. So I think that's everything for me. Leave me some comments down below with some of your favorite parts of Mindy's book. What did you love about it? What did you hate about it? Anything that I didn't cover that you wanna discuss, leave it in the comments below and speak amongst yourselves. I'm gonna get going and get started on the new book. I think that's everything. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, there goes another month, and that means it's time for March favorites. I have quite a few favorites, actually. I've been super excited, super, super excited, because I am now switching into spring-related makeup.